שלום וברכה. I, um, I had a certain uh, feeling um, today that I wanted to share with you. I realized that many times in our lives we are experiencing a certain thought, a certain negative thought, and it comes like an impulse to our heart. It's like It's like a wave that is increasing and, and growing and expanding and taking over all of our being. And when you have that thought, it can be positive and it can be negative. means from the side of how you experience it, from the side of how you feel it. But it's an emotional wave. And the person that... cannot control his emotions and his feelings or at least cannot be able to look at them and to be aware to them and he's being forced by them can lose a lot and there are many examples for that a person that can cannot that cannot control his anger a person that cannot control his lusts his desires and And the person that cannot control is his fear. That when fear attacks him, he's losing his mind and being forced to act and uh, react to, to the threat that he recognizes. But the thing that I wanted to mention and to speak about a little bit today, as much as uh, the Creator will allow us to, is... that we need to pay attention to the fact that many of our feelings and emotions are exaggerated based on on our trauma based on our past based on things that happened to us in the past and now because we don't want to experience them again and because that when they happened to us they were so painful Therefore, our body is reacting with a mechanism of self-defense that is exaggerated. And by following it, you're surrendering to that threat, even though you haven't checked yet if it's really threatening your life today or just waking up memories from the past, emotional memories from the past. I spoke about that topic in the past. And I explained that really to serve Hashem, we can, we can only in the present time. The past is not in our hands to do anything with it. There is no grab in the past. It already passed away from us. The future is our hopes and our dreams or might be our fears or our expectations or our... Um, our assumptions, our logic that is working too hard to plan. But in reality, yesterday I saw a post on, on Facebook, someone wrote, everything is, no, it, it, was, it, was, uh, it was not on Facebook, it was something else on social media. A person said, everything is under control, but not your control. <laughs> everything is, 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 is under control. A control but not ours so the Creator himself is the one who brings things forward so we cannot really know and recognize um, what will take place in the future based on our hopes or slash our fears so the future is also not in our hands but the present time is and I mentioned that the name of Hashem is is Havaya Baruch Hu. Havaya in Hebrew means the present time. The present time, the blessed present, that's who He is. You want to connect with Him? So connect with Him now. Soon we're going to go back to that topic and we're going to see how it links. Maybe it's better to do it now when, when we're still understanding the concept, even though I wanted to mention something else. Hopefully I'll be able to do that in a minute or two but let's go back to what we said 
if you want to attach yourself to the Creator, and the Creator is the God of truth, like the verse is saying, Hashem Elohim Emet, that God is um, the God of truth, that our Lord, that our Master, He is the God of truth. So you need to connect yourself to Him in reality means that you need to be realistic, you need to be normal, you need to be connected to, to the reality that is surrounding you for you to have any kind of hold and, and, and grab in the Creator. So if the past is not part of our life and the future is also not part of our life and we're experiencing everything only in the present time, it means that in reality our ability to connect ourselves to the Creator cannot be based on the past, cannot be based on the future. It must be based on the reality that Hashem, that the Creator, is with us right now in the present time. And as well, we need to mention that simple detail that we also spoke about in the past, that we know that the Creator, the, 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 His being is eternal. And even though we cannot experience eternity in our mind because our minds are limited when our souls are trapped and constricted into physical body into physicality we're not able to see above time and above space but the creator's existence is in all the moments in the same time it's true and you can sense and feel it right now that you are experiencing the reality. But when you were holding in the past, when you were standing in the past, you were also experiencing the, the past in the present time. You never felt it in the past. When you were in the past, that we're calling it the past, you were there in real time, like you are experiencing your life right now. And also the future that we're hoping to come is also something that we'll not ever experience in the future. When we will be in the future, we will experience it in the current time, in the present time. So from that we can understand that the Creator's existence with us is always in the present time. Just that we, because that our capacity of knowledge and feelings is limited, we are experiencing the reality of eternity in, in breaks, in, in portions, in moments. And every moment count for us as the present time. But in reality, the present time of yesterday and the present time of tomorrow and the present time of right now are all happening in the present time. This is the evident, the clearest and most simple evident of the eternity and infinity of the Creator Himself. Now, when you want to base your connection to reality based on the truth, means you want to live your life with the Creator, you want to live your life with Hashem, you want to be attached to the God of truth, to Hashem Elohim Emet. So for that you need to attach yourself to Him in the present time. Means that you cannot base your conclusions and this is where we're coming back to where we started this wonderful talk of today, we cannot base our, our thoughts and our decisions based on feelings from the past, based on patterns that we, uh, that we found ourselves stuck with as a result or as an outcome of experience that we had in the past means that if, for an example, a person hurt you in the past and now you feel threatened from this kind of people or from that individual, now when you come to a situation that that person or what that person represents for you is standing over there and now waking up that threat, you might not be threat at all by him because he's now coming with a different approach or that it's a total different person who just represents something in your mind. Your mind is making those connections to the past. Now, if based on the past so fast, you're not going to even check what are his real motives today, what really he came to do, what really is the opportunity and the option here in this moment, 
you might cancel a great opportunity. You might reject a huge amount of bounty that can come into your lap because you're scared to deal with the memories of the feelings that that situation wakes up in your mind. And because of that, you're going to kill, you might kill and might destroy a great opportunity that is coming your way. And because of that, it's very important for the person to learn how to breathe, for the person to come back to his sense, and for the person to, to, to try to develop a higher level of self-awareness for him to experience things in reality. So when a wave of feelings and emotions is coming to you, you need to try to recognize it. You need to try to recognize if it's a real threat or if it's reality that is threatening you. And you have the time to do that. You have the time to try to think. Some of the things that are coming to us are forcing and trying to force us to take a decision. But the verse in Tehillim is saying, Belachatz Oyev. The enemy is attacking the person when he's under pressure, in stress. When you are under stress, you have an enemy. The enemy is trying to force you not to be calculated, not to observe, not to look, not to think, not to try to feel, not to try to feel the reality that is surrounding you. I think that the best advice to develop that self-awareness is by doing it bodhidut. It bodhidut is that individual prayer. It's that simple conversation of a person with God that you're talking to him like you talk to your best friend. And you just need to learn how to do that in a simple way. You just go to a quiet place. And even though we spoke about it thousands of times on the individual prayer and that concept of hit bodedut, a person must bring it so deep into his heart that it will be the main tool for him to deal with life. All the time. It's like that... A mechanic cannot walk without his screwdriver, without, without his tools, like that an, a writer will not go anywhere without his pen, without his notebook. A, a, a journalist will not go without his computer. A, a, a camera, a videographer will not go without his camera. A believer cannot go one step in life without prayer. Faith is being expressed in the highest level when you express it with your mouth, when you pray. Because you have a lacking, you have a situation, you are in a need, therefore you need a salvation. So if you are, uh, 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 if you don't believe in Hashem, so you'll try to call your lawyer, try to call your mother, try to call your friend. But if you are a believer, you will understand that only the Creator can assist you in this situation. Therefore you're going to call Hashem. And you call Hashem with your mouth. You call Hashem from your heart. You call Hashem honestly. You just call Him and you ask for His salvation. The way that it's taking place is with the individual prayer. So when a person is praying on his issues and on his life and on things that he's experiencing, so um, by that he is uplifting his self-awareness um, to a deeper level, to a much higher and spiritual level. The way to do it is just to grab a situation that is bothering you and to talk about it, to surround it and to dissect it and to look deep into it and to think about it and to rethink about it and to try to put another option and to try to, to think what happened and what did I felt and what happened to me and, and was it real and was it like a real threat or why, why, am I, why was I reacting so badly, why was I so angry or, or terrified or lost why did I feel so so much pain in that situation and then to pray on those things when you find a spot that you that needs healing it doesn't need you only to wash it or only to put a band-aid on it or just to put a, 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 a cream on it you might need all three things or, or maybe even more therefore a person must take every situation in life to real treatment. You need to see the situation. Okay, something happened, something bothered me today. Okay, I'll try to think about it. Now, what really happened? What happened to me? What was I thinking? What, 
what really happened and, and, and go with your thoughts. Allow yourself to express, I was scared, I was afraid, I didn't know, I wasn't sure. Express your feelings and your thoughts through your mouth, using your mouth and say those things and then say to yourself, okay, so now the heal, now, okay, I, I brought up those feelings, those emotions to the surface. Now what do I do with it? I need to clean it. Okay, so that was wrong and that was right and that was not my fault and that was my lacking over there. And you start, you try to find and to recognize the real condition of your wound, of, of your pain, of your, of your struggle. And after that, the healing process is coming. Okay, I need to wash it, I need to clean it, I need to put a cream on it, I need to cover it, I need to expose it to the sun. You need to think with yourself what will heal you emotionally. Okay, I need to pray for that, or I need to make an effort not to fall to that thing again. I need to accept on myself not, not, to, not to go into those situations. Sometimes you don't have any physical... Um, ability to make any change so you can only pray please Hashem I'm so lost on that situation in that thing please save me please help me please wake up my, my mind please open my eyes please let me not fall into those traps I'm always falling and failing in them without recognizing them the truth must be said and you need to up to 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 climb one step to the next in the process of healing with your mind, with your heart, using the mind tools and the feelings and the heart tools that have been given to you by the Creator, by the one who made you a human being with so many powers and tools to deal with every situation in a healthy way. Okay? That thing that I wanted to tell you before, that I remembered and then I stopped and I put it aside, when I mentioned the verse Adonai Elohim Emet, I realized that I saw um, um, many, many um, comments. We have a, um, a wonderful short clip that we post a um, um, few months ago in April. And um, I was talking over there about the question if Christianity is um, idolatry or if it's not. And there are many, many questions um, that are coming. And there are many, many people who are commenting. And that video went viral. Uh, and many people are enjoying its content. And also it wakes up a lot of um, pressure. Um, and, um, and it's like, um, it's, it's waking up some demons in, in hearts of some people. And of course you have some decent people and honest people and truthful people. It's not a war enemies, right against wrong and, and, and righteous against evil, not at all, just it's a conversation and people are talking and there are many, many people who are simply following their, their old beliefs and it's okay and that's what they have and we're not judging. I just wanted to say one thing about the name of Hashem. I saw in the comments on that video that many people are falling to that um, mistake about the name of Hashem. There are few places in the Bible that the name of Hashem, uh, Yud Kivavke, is appearing twice. It's written once after the, after, uh, after the next. It, it's written and then it's written again. Or that it's written Adonai Elohim uh, Emet, like that verse that I mentioned. And many people are, their mind is, is twisted they are not understanding the simple truth about the Creator and, and His unity. And they are taking like those names and they're separating them in their false belief, in their, in their bent mindset. They are referring one of the names, God forbid, to a human being. And they're saying that it's Him. It's that person that they follow, that they believe in him, that he is God himself or, or some other thing that like you have too many methods and too many ways in Christianity um, for you really to be able to say that is Christianity. You have so many groups and so many people with so many assumptions. And um, so the thing that I wanted to mention 
to to the followers that are uh, struggling with this uh, concept of the name of Hashem and referring one of the names of Hashem uh, to a human being, God forbid. Uh, so that's a complete, um, I think you say, misinterpretation. Like uh, it's it's a wrong um, understanding of the true meaning of the verses. Always when the name of Hashem is appearing um, in, in Havaya, in Yud Kevavke, it's talking only about Hashem, about the Creator of the world and no one else, because there is no one else except for Him. And there is only one spot, um, only one time, that the name Elohim is, um, is appearing, that it's talking about the angels, and one time that the name Elohim is appearing, and it's talking about the Chachamim, about the sages, about the wise people in general. Because the name Elohim is being used also um, to express powers of the Creator, and not only as a name of the Creator Himself. So the word Elohim can be used for different things. Also, when, um, when idols are being mentioned, so they are being called Elohim Acherim, foreign God. So here you have the name of God, Elohim, that is being mentioned as well in, in a dark way, in, in, a, in a foreign way, to express forces that are being taken and being used in foreign way. Um, but again, always, 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 the name Yudke Vavke, um, the name Havaya Baruchu, uh, that is not allowed to be said. And this is why I'm saying Yudke Vavke. When I say Yudke Vavke in Hebrew, I'm spelling the letters of the name um, Havaya Baruchu. And people who are allowing themselves um, to express his name are committing a horrible sin. They're doing something very, very wrong. And the Ten Commandments, it's written that we should never um, say the name of God and speak his name out loud um, for a purpose that is not um, perfectly synchronized with his will um, for an empty reason. Now, why did I say for a reason that is not perfectly synchronized with his will? Because a person can say, okay, it's not for an empty reason. I have a good reason to say his name right now. No, good sir. You don't have a good reason to say his name. It's better for you to fill your mouth with water and shut it and relax and realize that you are not yet worthy to spell the name of God um, freely every time that you feel like you uh, you should. It's better for us to protect ourselves and to respect our Father in Heaven in a greater way and never to express His name and of course not to relate His holy name um, to a person, to a man. Um, to a man. So that's it. I bless you from the bottom of my heart to rise and shine and to be beautiful and to keep on shining the light of your souls. Amen. And may the answer to all our prayers take place in our days in front of our eyes while hugging all our loved ones with us. Amen. <laughs> Shum